Let me show you guys how I made my churro cheesecake. In a bowl, you're going to need a quarter cup of sugar and three tablespoons of cinnamon. You're going to mix everything together and set that aside. For the filling, you need two eight ounce blocks of softened cream cheese. You will also need a quarter cup of sour cream. And yes, I said sour cream. Don't leave that out. Half a cup of sweetened condensed milk or sugar, two tablespoons of vanilla and three eggs. Now you whisk everything together until there's no more lumps. I'm using my emergent blender because I want mine to be smooth. You can also put it in your blender. You need two cans of croissant dough. One of them's gonna be for the bottom crust and the other one's gonna be for the top crust. Now I'm gonna spray my pan with a little bit of nonstick spray and then sprinkle a little bit of that sugar and cinnamon mixture. Shake it up a bit, you know, to make sure everything's evenly coated. Then you add one of your cans of croissant dough onto the bottom. Sprinkle a little bit more of that sugar and cinnamon mixture and then add your filling. To the top of your filling, you're gonna lay the other croissant dough. I did mine in pieces because I like to make my life super hard and I chose a round pan instead of a square one, so... Pick your battles, guys. I'm gonna spray the top of the croissant dough with a little bit more nonstick spray and then sprinkle it with a little bit more of that sugar and cinnamon mixture. Then we're gonna take it to the oven and let this bake at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minutes are up, you're gonna let this cool down before you stick it into the fridge and let this sit for three hours. My family does not understand what let this sit for three hours. They just started eating the damn cheesecake. So now we're just gonna decorate whatever's left. I add some chopped strawberries and then I drizzle lots of sweetened condensed milk all over the cheesecake. We're we're also gonna drizzle a little bit of cajeta, dulce de leche, caramel, whatever you know it as. And that's it guys, hope you like this recipe, bye! Let me show you guys how to make a quick weenie ceviche. Yup, you heard correctly, we're making a ceviche made out of weenies or salchichas. You're gonna need a whole packet of weenies and then you're gonna cut them up into small little pieces. Then you throw everything into a bowl along with all your cut up veggies. We're using some onion, cilantro, tomato, a little bit of cucumber, shredded carrot, and some jalapenos. And of course, you can't forget your lime juice because remember, we're making a ceviche. I don't know why they call this a ceviche, but that's what it's called and that's what we're gonna call it. Add salt and pepper to taste and then you add a little bit of salsa maggi or soy sauce, some clamato juice, and a little bit of ketchup. Then you mix everything together and it's ready to serve. I'm gonna drizzle lots of chipotle mayo all over my tostada and then scoop some of that weenie ceviche. Then I drizzle lots of valentina sauce all over the tostada. And of course, we can't forget some avocado slices. And that's it guys, this is how to make a weenie ceviche. I also made some cute little rats made out of radishes and I was gonna put them in the plate, but I totally forgot. But this is what they look like, look at how cute. Hope you like this recipe, bye. Let me show you guys how I made my dragon fruit mango lemonade. And let me tell you, this agua fresca is going to have you saying Starbucks who? Anyways, we're going to cut up open our dragon fruit and remove the meat from the skin. This is my first time buying dragon fruit and the reason why is because every time I see this fruit, I immediately make a U-turn because it's so expensive. I literally paid $12 for this. And honestly, to me, it just tastes like a flavorless kiwi. But I'm not going to lie, this fruit is freaking beautiful. So I guess it was worth every penny. Now I'm just going to cut it up into chunks and reserve some for garnish we're also gonna need a mango we're gonna peel the meat from the skin and also reserve some for garnish to make my drink that purple reddish color that starbucks has i bought red frozen dragon fruit because i couldn't find any fresh one and even if i did i would have gone broke in the house for the lemonade or limeade we're gonna use the juice of four lemons or limes then i throw everything into my blender and sweeten it up with sweetener of choice i'm gonna use about a cup of sugar wink wink fill up the rest of your blender with water and blend until smooth to my three quart pitcher i'm gonna add all the fruit we cut up for garnish then I pour all the mixture that we just blended Fill up the rest of the pitcher with water and mix. And this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness. If it needs more sugar, add more sugar. If it's too sweet, just add more water. Fill up your favorite cup with ice and pour yourself some delicious and refreshing dragon fruit mango lemonade. I honestly couldn't get over how beautiful this fruit was, so I'm just gonna garnish it with a big old piece of dragon fruit. Now I'm just gonna add a matching straw to my drink, and there you have it, guys. Hope you like this recipe. Bye! Let me show you guys a simple recipe for watermelon rim dip. You're gonna need six of these watermelon pulparindos. You will also need three watermelon lucas. And since I'm extra AF, I'm gonna use some watermelon flavoring. You will also need some tahine. I use two types of chamoy. I use this big papa one that I use more for consistency because it has no flavor. And this chamoy, which has the flavor. 
Now we're just going to do the fun part of unwrapping all your candies and dumping all the powders. Then I put all the pulparindos into a non-stick pot because we're going to take this to the stove and melt them on low. Make sure that it's on low and you don't burn it because if you do, then it's going to be musgusting. Then I add half a cup of my cheap chamoy, half a cup of my good chamoy. Now I'm just going to whisk everything together on low until there's no more lumps. We want this to be smooth until there's no more lumps like this. Now I just add the watermelon powder, half a cup of tahine, and this is the part where everyone's gonna have a heart attack. Yes, more sugar. I'm only gonna add two more tablespoons of sugar and that's so the consistency can get thicker. One capful of the watermelon flavoring, couple squirts of fake lime juice. I like using the fake lime juice because my paste will stay longer in my fridge. I mix everything together, let it cool, and once cool, you can start making all of your delicious drinks. That's why it's called rim paste because it's for the rims of your cups. But our favorite way to use the rim dip is on fruit, especially on some watermelon and some nectarines. And that's it, guys. Hope you like this recipe. Bye. Let's pack today's lunchbox for our friends and followers. Today I'm making them bacon cheeseburgers with a crispy shrimp patty. I really didn't know what to call this burger because I was just inspired and made it, so maybe you guys can help me. I begin by making my shrimp patty. I use onion, shrimp chunks, shrimp paste, a little bit of cornstarch, and then I season it up with El Chupacabra's Cajun seasoning. And with wet hands, I begin to form my patties. I'm using brioche buns, so I'm gonna shape them to the size of my buns. Then I coat them in some panko before I take them to my fryer to fry at 350 degrees for a five minutes until they got nice and crispy. For the beef patties, I'm just gonna season those up with a little bit of two gringos chupacabra rub. Then I add some chopped onions, chopped jalapenos, and I don't know what the hell, but I add some panko in there. Then I mix everything up and started to form my patties using my tortilla press because it's way easier and cleaner for me. Then I cook them up on my comal because I still don't got gas. Add my cheese of choice. Then I place my patty on top of some crispy ham. Cook up some bacon. Butter up my buns. Make sure they're nice and crispy. Then I spread some spicy homemade Thousand Islands all over my buns. Add some lettuce, tomatoes, the patty with the ham and cheese. I'm gonna add two slices of bacon, then I add my crispy shrimp patty. As if that wasn't enough, I'm going to melt some mozzarella cheese and then I drizzle it all over my shrimp patty. Top it off with my top bun and there you have it guys. Yes, I know, that's why I was having a hard time naming this burger because I use a whole lot of stuff. Now I'm just gonna carefully wrap it in some parchment paper and cut it in half, that way you guys can look at what the inside looks like. Along with their burger, they're gonna get a side of steak fries that I season with more two gringos chupacabra seasoning. I didn't have ketchup so I'm just gonna put some burning butthole hot sauce today they had the option between a soda or a mango dragon fruit lemonade agua fresca and you already know they went straight for the dragon fruit drink and that's it guys i'm just gonna hurry my ass up get everything ready for them including their drinks and they come and pick up during lunchtime bye Let me show you guys how I make my salsa matcha. Also known as chili oil, chili en aceite, turtle sauce, whatever the hell you know it as. In a pan with about a cup of oil, we're going to fry up a tortilla. I'm actually gonna crisp this tortilla until it turns like a tostada. We're not burning it, we are crisping it. In that same oil, I'm gonna add about five garlic cloves until the garlic cloves have turned into a golden brown. Then I shut off the stove and add a couple handfuls of chile de arbol. My oil is freaking hot right now. I know I turned off my stove, but the oil is still hot. You're gonna be moving those chiles because we don't want these to burn. If you burn this, your salsa is gonna be bitter. So pay attention guys. We're only gonna give those chiles a little toast. Then you're gonna cool them off and throw everything into that blender. At this point, you can add salt if you want to or chicken bouillon or nothing. Then I take it to my blender and blend until smooth. I'm gonna blend this twice because I really want it to be super smooth. Then I pour it into a container. And that's it guys. Now the salsa is ready for your pozole or for your birria or anything really. Hope you like this recipe. Bye.